Hi, my name's Kevin McDonnell and I've been in property for almost 20 years now. I'm known as the UK's leading expert at creative property investment strategies and I wrote the Amazon bestseller, No Money Down Property Investing. In this video, I'm going to be reacting to Mark Homer's property predictions for 2021. Mark Homer is the co-founder of Progressive Property, the UK's leading property education company. They also own, co-own and manage almost a thousand properties. He's one of the UK's leading experts in property and more specifically in commercial developments. Mark really knows his stuff and I cannot wait to react to his predictions. So before we get started with this video, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been in property over 15 years. I've developed several hundred units over many different sites all around the East Midlands. I'm at one of my projects at the moment, which is the old Marks and Spencer store right in the middle of Peterborough. We're developing this into 99 apartments and are well underway with the roof on and the steel structure all in place. This building looks really impressive and it's coming along really well. I can't wait to see it when it's completely finished. Clearly everybody knows that the pandemic has had a huge effect on the economy and sped up the demise of many, many markets. In particular within commercial property, the demise of retail property has been sped up significantly by the pandemic. All of these warehouses supplying directly to the homes mean that retail is moving off the high street and into warehouses and into industrial units on the edge of towns. Really good points there by Mark about the high street being pretty much killed off by the pandemic. Amazon was actually killing the high street before the pandemic ever happened. It's just the pandemic that pretty much finished off the high street. So it'd be interesting to see what Mark talks about in terms of where the opportunity might come on the high street for maybe residential property. Let's see. Despite what most of the so-called property experts said, property has actually gone up this year significantly. Most experts were predicting either a shallow fall or a significant crash. The demand for residential property outside of the big cities and in the provinces has increased significantly. Lots of people want to move to different sized homes in different locations because they're not having to commute as far with the pandemic. In addition to that, a stamp duty exemption up to 500,000 has clearly reignited the market and really pushed it on. The housing market's actually had a mini boom right now. So we've seen the high street fall apart. We've seen loads of big shops like the Acadia Group, Debenhams really struggle. Many go into liquidation, many close forever. Property prices have continued to go up. Why is that? There has been a printing of money in the last few months. Literally, there's more money available in the world today than there's ever been. They're printing it. But people with money are trying to protect that money. You can get 85 grand protected in a bank. If there's wealthy people with a lot of cash, they're sitting on that money, where are they going to put it? They're going to move it into property. So what we've seen over the last few months, what's caused this mini boom, Mark touched on the stamp duty holiday, but I don't feel it's just the stamp duty holiday. That has lit the fire, but there's been petrol chucked on the flames. And that petrol has come from furlough money. People not are still on furlough. When furlough comes to an end, will there be a lot more unemployment? Of course there will. Let's see if Mark talks about furlough. Also, there's been a lot of people with that cash sitting in bank accounts. They want to put it somewhere safe. They want to protect it. They're putting it into property. The stock market is volatile. They're moving it into property. Also, a lot of foreign money coming into the UK and interest rates at the lowest they've ever been, 0.1%. Savers, historical savers, moving their money into property. Now that could bring opportunity in 2021 because when all of that money has already moved into property over the last few months and it starts to slow down and the stamp duty holiday, if it doesn't get extended, will we start to see a tightening of the market? And if there's a tightening of the market, that can bring opportunity for you if you know your stuff. Well, the first thing that most people love to ask me is what's gonna to happen to property prices? Are they gonna go up or are they gonna crash? Well, I just think that that's the wrong question. I think that there is no market professional, no expert, no one who supposedly knows what they're talking about in this arena that actually knows the answer to that question. And I think it's a naive question. I think to be focusing on whether property is gonna go up or down is the wrong thing to be looking at. I think you need to be looking at strategies that work in all markets because it is unpredictable. It is something that you 
nor anybody else can actually get an answer for. The reason for that is nobody knows what's going to happen to interest rates. Nobody knows what's going to happen in terms of government support. That's been the big change this year. The government has ploughed loads of money into the economy, they've printed loads of money, and that has given support both to the employment market, the property market, and the wider economy. I really like that from Mark. You hear people on social media all the time saying there's gonna be a property crash, there's gonna be a property rise. If anybody said to us back in March that there'd be higher property prices today than there was in March, we'd have all laughed. But that is the reality of what has happened. So will they continue to rise? Will they drop? Who knows? We can only wait and see. Here's what I do know is a professional property investor is always looking for opportunity. You are not buying property just because it's gone down or just because it's gone up. You're buying deals, deals. You're buying something that you can add value to. Let's say you buy a property. It needs a refurbishment. You add value to it. If you add 20, 25, 30% of the value of that property and the market drops 10%, you've still made money. It's about buying value and buying cash flow so you can ride out any changes to the property prices. I stopped in 2007 for six years and did nothing. And had I continued to invest in property, my portfolio would be significantly bigger than it is today. And my wealth would be significantly bigger than it is today. I'm happy with where I'm at, but it could have been so much more. Do not wait to buy property. Buy property and wait. The reality is there are two types of investor. Those who can't time the market and those who know they can't time the market. Really love the point Mark made there about two types of property people. Those that can't time the market and those that know they can't time the market. I know I can't time the market. That's what I mean by wait, don't wait to buy property, buy property and wait. Is that the residential property market, specifically single lets and HMOs, are likely to see increased tenant demand in 2021. Why is that? Well, with unemployment predicted to go from around one and a half million to, according to the Bank of England, 2.6 million in 2021, there would presumably be more people renting and less buying as happened in the last crash and the crash of the early 90s. That ties in with what I've said about the boom in HMO room demand, but also let's look at the single let part. So with the unemployment going up, Mark touched on over two and a half million people potentially being unemployed. Those people are gonna be on universal credit. They're gonna be looking for housing benefits until they get jobs again. So there's going to be an upsurge in demand for accommodation for unemployed people, social housing. Look to speak to your local councils. See if there's demand in your area for housing council tenants, social housing accommodation, social housing accommodation providers. Maybe your sweet spot this year could be getting properties that you give for social housing. There's definitely going to be a demand and a lot of people have found out in the last few months how important government money is. And that's exactly what you get with a council tenant. I think it's pretty obvious that interest rates are not likely to go up. In fact, the Bank of England has been making noises about preparations for negative interest rates. That means you're going to be paying money to put money into a savings account and potentially, a little bit like Denmark, some of you may end up being paid to actually take a mortgage out. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? Really interesting prediction about negative interest rates, if they do come. A lot of people talk about fixed rate mortgages. Standard variable rate mortgages means that you are tracking the base rate. Our tracker products tracking the base rate. Maybe you want to keep your products on low rate trackers. Maybe you've currently got one and you're thinking about fixing the rate long term in case there's a rise. Maybe the best product to be on will be that low rate tracker product. If you're looking to buy property right now, you can lock in long-term low interest rates. So maybe secure a five-year term, a 10-year term on an interest rate at a really low figure. Because he's saying he doesn't predict interest rates to go up, but over the next 10 years, they could go up. This is a 2021 prediction, not a 2030 prediction. And secondly on that, 
if we go into negative interest rates, there will never have been a better time in history to attract joint venture partner finance, private investor finance, the savers who don't want to necessarily own property. Maybe they just want to lend their money and get a higher interest rate return. Somebody with 200 grand sitting in a bank account and they're paying the bank to hold their money when they could give it to you, protect it from that payment and make money on their money. Phenomenal, phenomenal opportunity to raise JV funding right now in the market, even without negative interest rates. At 0.1% interest rate, right now, no matter what happens, there's never been a better time in history to attract private investor finance. Is that I suspect lending may actually become easier in 2021 as the fog lifts and banks get to see exactly how this thing ends. I think it's clear that as we move through 2021 and unemployment continues to rise, once banks can see how bad it's going to get and how much support the government is likely to give with quantitative easing and all the other schemes that they're using to pump money into the economy, they will become less concerned and I suspect make their products even more attractive. Really interesting point about bank lending becoming maybe more available and reducing the um, criteria around bank lending. Now back in 2007, there was the financial crash, 2007, 2008. That is a completely different type of crash. I've seen a lot of people over the last few months compare the two, but you can't really compare the two. That was a banking crisis, that was a financial crisis. What's happening right now is a health pandemic is completely different. The banks are not as leveraged as they were back then. They've not been offering 125, 130% mortgages for the last few years. Buy to let mortgages have been at 75, 80%. So the banks are in a pretty stable place. Now, when I say banks are in a pretty stable place, some banks may be at risk. Banks that are smaller, maybe newer to the market, maybe they took some extra risks. But the big banks, the high streets, the institutions, they're pretty stable. Here's what I would tell you though, if you've got the right type of property deal with you, where you're buying value, you can absolutely get the funding. But also remember, private investor finance. Maybe you don't even need the bank money. There's so much private cash out there, that could be your route into property. The government has so far spent around 350 billion pounds just on the pandemic. They're due to spend 22 billion just on track and trace. That is more than the combined budget of the police and the fire brigade for one whole year. That is crazy. 22 billion on track and trace and I'm not even sure it works more than the entire budget on the police force and the fire brigade. Almost spent the entire annual budget just on the pandemic, it's nuts. The reality is that asset prices are likely to lift off the back of this QE. So as we go further into this and we come out the back end, house prices, stock markets, you've already seen them start to lift, but you're going to see into the next cycle significant lifting as the value of money decreases. If it's anything like the last recession, the prices of consumer goods and all of the stuff that goes into the basket for the retail prices index isn't likely to lift that much. If it did, the quantitative easing would be reduced significantly and interest rates are likely to go up. But more likely, like what happened in the previous recession, asset prices are likely to increase and there'll be another asset price bubble. So, some people think we've had a mini bubble already. Mark is predicting a bigger bubble. Very interesting, but also very, very likely to happen. Because if you want to see what's going to happen in the future, you've got to look at what happened in the past. And every time there is inflation, quantitative easing, it pushes values up. House prices, what do we all know about them? We all know no matter what happens, they're going to be higher in 2030 than they are in 2020, just like they were higher today than they were in 2010. It will continue to go up. Rents will continue to go up. And the longer you wait to get started, the more you get left behind. The reality is, though, the government can't keep on spending, can't keep on offering unlimited support and furlough schemes. So there is going to be a day of reckoning. The market is going to tighten 
and those with cash and the ability to move are going to get deals. So those with cash and the ability to move are going to get deals. Maybe you're listening to this thinking, well, wait a second, I don't have cash. Remember, it does not have to be your cash. There's cash out there. There's people with cash. They have the money. They do not have the time. They do not have the knowledge. You need three things to be successful. Time, money and knowledge. The person with the money needs you. They need you to provide the time and the knowledge. Get yourself educated. Learn your area. Learn your strategy and you become investable. It doesn't matter how many flats or houses there are in an area. If you're offering the best product at the best price, you're gonna fill it and you're gonna reduce your voids. And I'm gonna focus on making sure that I've got the right debt on our portfolio that is well priced and significantly long term so that we can ride all of the ebbs and flows of the market. 100% agree with Mark there. I hear people all the time saying, my area is oversupplied, there's too much of this in my area, etc. Yet there's new people doing investment all the time. The world is round, everything keeps moving. There's people leaving the property game every day, there's people starting every day, there's people retiring every day, there's people dying every day, there's people being born every day. Things will continue to move and while you're standing still, you're getting run over. You've got to keep moving. You've got to keep pushing forward. I'm going to be continuing to build my portfolio through the next few years because I learned the lesson in 2007 by doing nothing till 2013 that I missed the boat. I'm not missing this one. I'm going to be going with the tide. So that's Mark Homer's predictions and my thoughts on his predictions. Overall, I would agree with Mark. We're gonna see unprecedented opportunities. We're gonna see huge changes, and those that are ready are gonna massively benefit. It's about the 1% again. 99% of people are gonna go with the masses. They're panicking, they're worried about what's happening, and the 1% get ahead. More millionaires and more billionaires are created in a time of a crisis than are ever created in a time of a rising market. You have got a choice right now. Go make sure that you're making that right choice and you're pushing yourself forward every single day. If you wanna stay up to date with the latest property updates just like this video, then make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See you on the next video. You're gonna play this as well separately, aren't you? Me, it's cracked.